If you've ever owned a water snake or a garter snake, you've probably heard the term thiamines floating around. Today, I'll be discussing what exactly thiamines is and what you need to know about it in order to keep a happy, healthy snake. So first, what is thiaminase exactly? Thiaminase is an enzyme found in the gut of many fish species. It breaks down thiamine before the animal that eats the fish is able to absorb it. Thiamine is also known as vitamin B1, so if they eat an animal that contains thiaminase in its gut, then they are unable to process thiamine or vitamin B1 themselves. Not being able to digest thiamine causes, of course, thiamine or vitamin B1 deficiencies. Thiamine is needed in all living organisms. It helps them convert carbohydrates into glucose, and it's also needed in order for the nervous system to work properly. So if an animal, including humans, has a deficiency in thiamine, they develop neurological issues. In humans, it usually causes amnesia, but in snakes, a thiamine deficiency causes things like seizures. Although all animals can develop vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiencies, garter snakes are at a higher risk because they eat a lot of fish in their diet, and thiaminase is often found in fish, like I was saying earlier. So if you feed a garter snake a diet solely of fish that contain thiaminase, they're going to have a deficiency and they're going to have seizures. If the deficiency is severe enough and it's left untreated, it will cause death in snakes too. We actually ran into a vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency in our garter snake here. This is Twiggy. She is one of my program garter snakes. And one night I came downstairs and I heard thrashing about inside of this tank. And it was her having a seizure right in front of us. I kind of freaked out, of course, and after she came to, after this convulsion, she was looking around, she was, you know, trying to figure out what just happened. And I started doing research. I wanted to figure out what the problem was. And it didn't take long for me to learn that it was a thiamine deficiency. I didn't really know anything about thiaminase at the time, so that entire evening I was just researching online. And she had another one, another seizure that same night, so we moved her into a small quarantine bin so that she couldn't thresh around and knock things over and potentially hurt herself. That evening she didn't move around a whole lot, she was just hunkered down in the back of her quarantine bin. I felt so bad for her, but thankfully I learned that the way to treat a vitamin B deficiency is, of course, to get vitamin B back into the snake system as fast as possible. These are literally just vitamin B pills, and what I did was I took half of one of these at a time and I slid it into a worm or a night crawler and I fed it to her. Thankfully she still had a great appetite. After about a week or so of giving her half a pill of these every day, she was thankfully back to normal and we moved her back into the tank and she's been fine ever since. If you have a snake with a vitamin B deficiency and you end up having to give them pills, the good thing to know is that this is water soluble, so it's very hard to overdose them with vitamin B. However, if you have a snake that does not want to eat after a convulsion, which is understandable, that's when you should bring your snake to a vet so they can actually inject the snake with vitamin B directly. Of course, the best way is to just avoid a vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency altogether. In order to do this, you can either denature the fish that have thiaminase in them by heating them up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit for a few minutes. But to be honest, it's just easier to avoid those species of fish altogether and feed your snake fish that do not contain thiaminase. I'll put a link down below in the description to the list of fish that do and do not contain thiaminase. And lastly, just give them a varied diet. Garter snakes eat all sorts of things in the wild. They eat frogs, toads, tadpoles, uh, worms, small mice. They'll eat bugs sometimes too. You don't just have to feed them fish. The important thing is to give them variety in their diet because just a fish-only diet with fish that contain thiaminase is going to cause neurological issues for sure. So thanks for watching. This is obviously a very important subject if you have garter snakes, water snakes, or any snake that eats a lot of fish in captivity. Just as kind of a fun side note, Ed and I recently got this new snake. Uh, she was slithering around in the tank a little bit during the video. Hopefully you saw it. And I'm not going to tell you what she is. Let's see if you can guess what she is. Obviously, she's in the garter snake family. And I'd like you to place your guess down in the comments below what species or mix of species that she is. And I'll let you know if you're right. We got this snake from a zoo in Chicago, actually. The zookeepers had two together that they thought were the same sex, but obviously they were not when they saw babies one day. And this is one of the babies from the two. So I'm really curious to see if you can guess what it is. And we'll see who's right. 
As you can see, they did a great job handling her and socializing her. She is very friendly, so I'm actually going to be using this snake in my programs now. She'll be a backup for the garter snake, the normal colored garter snake in there, so she can catch a break every once in a while, and so that this one can also help teach thousands of kids every year about garter snakes. As a Christmas bonus, I kind of had a photo shoot with some of my reptiles. Uh, some of them turned out pretty cute, so I'll be adding them at the end of this video as kind of a little slideshow. Thanks again for watching our videos. We'll have one more on Friday, and then we'll see you next year.